the way out. For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and lay hold on you. That is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance, that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience, and such as a man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and essayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place, that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up underneath of it patiently. 1 Corinthians 10.13 I hope you see from this parable type example how Satan takes our circumstances and builds strongholds in our lives, how he wages war on the battlefield of the mind, but thank God we have weapons to tear down the strongholds. God doesn't abandon us and leave us helpless. 1 Corinthians 10.13 promises us that God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear, but with every temptation... But with every temptation, he will also provide the way out, the escape. Any one of us may be Mary or John. I'm sure that most of us relate in some way to the scenario. Their problems are internal, in their thoughts and attitudes. They outward behave, their outward behavior is only a result of their inner life. Satan knows well that if he can control our thoughts, he can control our actions. You may have some major strongholds in your life that need to be broken. Let me encourage you by saying, God is on your side. There is a war going on, and your mind is the battlefield. But the good news is, is that God is fighting on your side. Okay, so that was chapter one of the Battlefield of the Mind, the book. This is what it looks like. And so now we're going to do the, uh, the study guide and the study guide looks like this. And so, yeah, we're going to do the study guide and the different little questions. And I'm keeping these recordings to 10 minutes so that they will successfully be on the, um, the website, I believe. Okay, so chapter one, The Mind is the Battlefield. The original book, The Battlefield of the Mind, read chapter one and then read your Bible, the scripture, read in your Bible the scriptures designated below and answer the questions that follow. And when you finish, check your answers in the key provided at the end of this book. As you continue to follow this procedure throughout this workbook, you can be assured that you will gain insight through understanding that will help you integrate these godly principles into your daily life and win the battle in your mind. Okay, so the first question is read Ephesians 6.12 and John 8.44. So Ephesians 6.12 for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the depositisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. That's Ephesians 6.12. And from the New American Standard, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, and against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. In Ephesians 6.12 of the International Version, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It's your choice which... Um, which uh, version of the Bible you would like to use. Uh, you can always go to BibleGateway.com and check out uh, more than one if you want. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Amplified Bible, 
I just wanted to read you the other American Standard, the New American Standard and the New International Version, so you knew how close they were. Okay, so the first question is, how does Satan attempt to defeat us? I'm just going to read first John 8.44, as we're instructed by the book. So I'll read again, Ephesians 6.12 and John 8.44. So Ephesians 6.12 for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the depositisms, against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. And John 8:44, You are of your father the devil, and it is your will to practice the lusts and gratify the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him, for he is a liar himself and the father of lies and of all that is false. And the questions are, how does Satan attempt to defeat us? That's 1A. Now 1B, what did... Jesus call the devil. 1C. In what way does Satan try to bombard our minds to defeat us? And 1D. Explain the phrase, one of the devil's strong points is patience. So a good idea might just be to press pause um, after you hear the question and then you can write it down. Um, or you can just press pause and answer the question, and then I will give the answers at the end of the lesson. Some of them are going to be uh, your own personal answers, but um, you'll get the gist of it when I, when I do the other part. Okay, so here's the question number two. Read 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. Okay, so from the Amplified... For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. So the question from 2a is what are strongholds and how does Satan attempt to set them up in our mind? B. Read the examples of strongholds Mary and John encountered in the text and give an example of a stronghold you have struggled with in your life. And C. How might, how, how might this stronghold have come about? Okay, now number three. Um, read John 8, 31 and 32, and Mark 4, 24. So John 8, 31 and 32... So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings, and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Mark 4.24 And he said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you, and more. Besides, you will be given to what you hear. And the question is, 3A, how can we overcome strongholds? 3B, how are we to use the weapon of the word of God to overcome strongholds? And 3C, why are prayer and praise effective weapons in overcoming strongholds? God never loses a battle. He has a definite battle plan, and when we follow it, we always win. Praise and worship are a really battle position.